There we go. The use of NSAIDs, that means like drugs like ibuprofen. We don't use that in horses, but drugs like Butte and Prevacox. Uh, Butte is very used for a long, 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 long time. It's a great drug to deal with really joint pain. And when there's really joint pain, uh, inflammation, sometimes even inflammation in muscle, Butte works well. Equiox or Prevacox works too, and the other ones work a little bit less good. But they always thought Butte is old, it's a different kind of medication than Prevacox. Prevacox is safer for the stomach. New research shows there's no difference. They both more or less do the same. Uh, there's also, Butte has been uh, used for a long time for many horses for like two to three years, sometimes without any too many side effects. Prevacox, if you read the label, only for three weeks. Yeah. It has not been tested any longer. We also don't know if it's safe for longer. For yeah. Butte, we know that from 20, 30 years, it works quite well for longer. Prevacox, we have no idea. Equiox? Equiox. Is that Prevacox? Yeah, yes. it's the same. Wow, so short term. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and again, I mean, you read the label, the FDA label, where they, where they approved it for three weeks, max. So when you give that for a year to your horse, you have no idea if he has a kidney left or that the liver is failing. You don't know. But blood work, then? Sorry? Uh, the mare that I have that had me, uh, she was on Dragicox for a year, and then I did blood work, which was usually I do. Yeah. And uh, everything was fine, luckily. It can, but, but it I doesn't have to. Uh, is it the same? If I use Banamine, if I would need to, I don't, uh, but if I would use Banamine. Banamine is not good for long-term use. Same thing. Okay, that's important for me. Because yeah. I thought that they were pretty much... No, Banamine ben ben is quite strong, and in general you want to give that, they, right. they more often give that for colic and not so much yeah, for, yeah. for, uh, for, for uh, uh, really as an anti-inflammatory for longer use. And it's very, especially when your horse is not uh, well, well, well hydrated, it can really give a lot of kidney, kidney damage. That's important. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Question in the back? You don't have to answer this, but this is it's a two uh, piece of the business right now. But let's say a horse has a chronic issue with a PFOB. If they're in chronic pain, it, it can't be on something like that long term, is what you're saying? Or? It can, but you need to realize it's not approved for it, and we don't really know if it's safe. If you have no choice, otherwise your horse cannot move, hey, and it works, think about it. But a lot of horses, or horse owners are told, your horse have arthritis, and this is the best for the best of his life. I want to try to explain to you, there is no proof of that. Uh, and if a horse really needs for the rest of his life, or for a longer time, a drug, you may not buy, might figure out why that is, because a lot of the problems, we can deal with it in another way. Uh, and like what you mentioned, but I'll show you a little later, or more on the day, uh, when you have a better balance between two muscle groups in your joint, quite often the problem is already fixed. Uh, but that means different way of riding your horse or different way of doing rehab, not the quick thing from giving the pill. And that's the problem in the, uh, in the American medication, medication system, human anyway. You go to the doctor, you get a pill, great. They don't even tell you, like, hey, if you take your diet, you can fix it too. Most people will not even want to do it. They want to have the pill and then feel better with all the side effects. It's in, in veterinary medicine exactly the same. 12 years, 14 years, something like that. So but we don't have any real studies, studies on how, how, what the side effects of the long run would be. Did we do that to Butte? Yeah, that just Butte has done a lot. They did to the yeah. Okay. And also for Butte, we know, and that's again when we talk about numbers, many, many Butte has begun, yeah, many right. more, more years and many more horses did, did get it. Right. And we didn't really see too much side effects. Uh, maybe in 10 years or 15 years, we still have to say from from, uh, from Prepacox. Right. Or we say, exactly. man, it kills them. We don't right. know. We don't know yet. Right. That's, I guess that's kind of where I was going. Yeah. How long has it been on the market? Right. Yeah. Uh, important part is, again, in good hands, it's a good management tool. If a horse has pain and you want to make it, I do that a lot in my cases. What I want to do is rehab. I'm specialized in rehab. Uh, and rehab means I try to make the tissue around that joint better so that it can better deal with the problem in the joint. That means if the joint is painful and the horse does not want to do any rehab because it's painful, I need to do something. So I give them the drug to achieve a goal, and it's a tool, it's a management tool, to achieve the goal to make that horse go through rehab. Then he maximizes the range of motion in that joint again, the muscles on both sides of the joint are doing a better job, and you can quit the drug. That's 
clever use of a medication, not just throw it at the horse and hopefully it will work for a long time. That's not how medication should work. Again, good diagnosis. And when the, the vet has no x-rays and said it will likely be arthritis because the horse is 20, here you have Butte for the rest of his life. There are a lot of steps skipped there. And sometimes it works because it is what they said, but very often it's something different. And think about how you would be diagnosed yourself. You go to your doctor, you really have knee pain, and he says, well, I think it's this, here's the medication, see you in five years. Would you accept that? Don't think no. so. I think you want to have an MRI, you want to have CT, you want to know what's going on. You should do that with your, with your horse too. Uh, Adequan, we were talking about that before. Adequan is tested uh, to get a FDA approval, so it's an approved drug, so it works, and it has been show to work, to work as an anti-inflammatory, but what they did is seven doses with two days intervals. If you do that, it's really expensive. What they tell sometimes people, veterinarians or people that sell the Adequan, oh, once a year you give that as a good, good extra shot. There's no proof that that ever would work. Uh, it's maybe not bad for your horse either, but there's no proof that you should spend a lot of money doing that. Uh, if you do it, then do it at least what it's approved for. Seven days with two days interval. And then, Research has shown it's an anti-inflammatory, but if you put it on a, on, a, on a scale from 1 to 10, it's maybe a 1, and beauty is a 7. So if your horse is really lame, Adequan is really not going to fix it. Mm -hmm. If your horse is barely not lame, quite often do a little bit of rehab, fixes it too, and you don't need the expensive Adequan. Legend, uh, it would be like hyaluronic acid, and you put it in the muscle, uh, and then it goes to the whole horse to the right, the right place. Well, if you believe that, keep believing. <laughs> not any proof that that would do it. Uh, there's a little bit of research that Cosequin is one of the supplements uh, with uh, uh, some, some building blocks for uh, joints that that should have a decent anti-inflammatory property. And so there's some research for that. So if you want to use one of the supplements, then at least taste that one. Uh, I think I've seen one other osteomax or so, there's no proof of it at all, other than nice ads in the, in the uh, horse journals five people say oh my horse is I before it was really lame now I give it he's amazing uh, quite often if you google the name of the po people you will never find them because they don't exist uh, so it's just it's just a game they want to sell you stuff uh, for joint health you need a program that's individualized for your horse uh, some horses at a young age are really flexible and they damage their joints a lot because they're so flexible they need a different program for later, then you have a horse that's always careful with himself and didn't really help him and damage himself in, in, the, in the time. So when I talk about a program, it's not uh, for every horse the same. That's where you need some insight in what's wrong with this horse, what are the, the weak and the strong spots of this horse at this age, 12, 14, 16, 25, and what can I do to make that better? That's individualized. Per horse that differs. And there are a lot of, a lot of the ideas are similar, but what you're exactly going to do with that horse is really depending on your horse. And that means, again, a diagnosis first. And so even if you write all this down later, you're going to do exactly what I tell you here to your horse might not work because your horse might have a problem that needs to be fixed first or has another weak spot that you need to make stronger first. And that's where it's important that, that you know what's going on. Yeah? Things you want to know, for instance, for your program is the amount of arthritis. Yeah? If, if, if all the joints are really having a lot of, of, of cartilage damage, you're going to do different things than when the horse has not a lot of damage. And you will be surprised. I don't really do a lot of x-rays on, on legs if I don't have an indication. And when there's a problem, we make x-rays. And then always the contralateral leg too. Eh? So left front is lame. We think it's in the fetlock. We do the, left, the right fetlock too. And if they completely have the same problem, might not be one lame, really lame leg and the other not. So there's something else. Eh? But in a lot of horses, especially like for, for pre-purchases, uh, you, you do x-rays, a lot of horses don't really have a lot of arthritis, even not when they're really old. But it can be really stiff. They're not stiff from arthritis. They're stiff from stiff muscles, stiff tendons, stiff ligaments. Uh, amount of muscle issues. And that, a lot of horses do muscle issues. Not like major muscle disease, but they have stiff muscles. We have taught our horse to do the job in the wrong way. Uh, like, we don't really warm up enough or we don't do cool down enough. So a little bit of lactic acid from your work is still in the muscle. The next day, that horse is stiff from that muscle, from that lactic acid. And if you do that for a long time, you're gonna damage the whole horse. So there are really big points to make by understanding what we're doing. 
Uh, all the tendon, limbs, and ligaments injuries. I, I mentioned that. If you have an old uh, uh, tendon and ligament injury, over time, uh, scar tissue has a tendency to shrink. So then that, that, that tissue gets already tighter and stiffer, and tendons and ligaments have the tendency to get tighter and stiffer anyway. You can deal with that with stretching exercises. We can't talk about that. But if you never do that until there is really a problem at age 18, you're far too late. You need to start to do the stretching at age 12, when the things start to get stiffer. And then you can maybe avoid that scar tissue from getting smaller, and you can avoid that tendon from really getting stiff, because the tendon starts to still get, and it will finally get stiffer, but you delay that process a lot. And that's where we can make a huge uh, difference. And the use of the horse. If the horse is once a week used for a little trail ride, or needs to go to the Olympics next week, there's a big difference. <laughs> and that makes also, well, you can imagine. And, and that, that, that means that when I make a program for a horse and tell this would be the program for your horse, I need to know what you're gonna do with it. Uh, and then also people need to be honest because that's what we quite often see with the pre-purchase. The people are afraid, that's funny, yeah, with the pre-purchase. You wanna buy the horse, but you still have a vet look at it. If the vet tells you something not good, you're gonna try to make that still be good. Yeah. Uh, so, when, you, uh, when I ask clients, and I, they have to write it down, and they have to sign it, what's you, you're gonna use your horse for? Quite often, or uh, twice a week, this high jump, and that's it. Uh, and then you're, they have a problem, and two years later, they wanna sue you, they tell you, oh, I wanted to go to the Olympics, and now I can't. Uh, so, they, they make the, what they wanna do with the horse, they, they, they turn that down, they tune that down on purpose, maybe not conscious, but they turn that down, because they don't wanna hear them know you better not buy this horse. The same thing is for when I want to want to make a program. I want to really know what you want to do with that horse. Uh, and some people tell me, "Oh, once a week a trail ride," and then they are training for going from Michigan from one side to the other. Well, I better know that because I would make a different program. A preventive medicine, deworming, really important because older horses, quite often, the immune system gets a little bit less effective. But funny enough, quite often we see that older horses, when you take uh, a fecal sample quite often the older horses until they get really old never really have a problem with shedding eggs they have clearly a, a good in, enough immune system to deal with it quite often the really young horses or the weak horses have problems that also means that when we think we do a good job on the old horses deworming them a lot it's not helpful because we create a lot of resistance and what's a good thing to do is really a couple of times a year take a sample manure sample and see if there are eggs in, huh? eggs from the, the, the worms in. If there are eggs in and a lot, then you deworm. You will see a lot of older horses don't have them. Unless you certainly see them start showing up and then you know there's something that really stresses that horse. Or the immune system is really down. That's also a good thing to know. You get a signal like something is changing uh, and not just go then buy more dewormer, but also think, why is that? Uh, and quite often we see it's stress. Uh, for instance, old horse has always been in a group with three, four more or older horses. Two of them die. Uh, because they're really old, they put two younger horses in the group. Well, think about the stress in the two others. Then you see all kind of that, those kind of changes. Uh, vaccinations, really important, uh, but selective, meaning if your horse never goes to a show, uh, you don't maybe need too many uh, vaccinations. Maybe just influenza and tetanus is good enough. Uh, when your horse is in an area where a lot of horses go uh, everywhere and come back, you might need more. Also important, when? When do you use your vaccines? Most of the problems we vaccinate against are from vector-borne diseases. Uh, you get them from flies, uh, mosquitoes, things like that. So uh, injecting them in fall is not very helpful. You, you wanna stimulate the immune system like early in, in, in spring. And the older the horse gets, the quite lower that reaction is. So you need to know. On the other hand, we also quite often see that older horses, for instance, for rabies, uh, they say every year, they quite often, if you would measure the antibody, you see that older horses have a really high antibody. You can maybe go for one to five a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would not say you should do that, but realize that you should not give your old horse all the vaccinations you think you should get. They, they, they're available because you might not need that. Uh, and here again, uh, regular checkups and monitoring. That's why we have a couple of barns. Uh, a centennial is uh, in this area is one of them. We look at those horses once, a, once every half year. And we do more or less like a pre-purchase exam with flexion tests. We're looking at the flexibility of the back. And quite often the rider doesn't even know there's really a problem going on. But when you half a year see that, you say, hey, the, the, the flexibility in the back in the lumbar sacral region is really diminishing. And then you have a moment to say, okay, now we're going to see why that is. Maybe it needs treatment. Maybe we just need to adapt the training. That's helpful. 
that's much better spending your money than having a shaker plate or uh, your whole cart with all the uh, supplements because that's as, as, as expensive for sure, but it's not as effective. And knowing what's going on is really, really helpful. And what people sometimes think, and uh, in 2016, I was uh, one of the vets that would get the American team ready for the Olympics, and I was thinking we would do that. We would go there and, and check at horses and foresee a problem. That was not the plan. The plan was to inject them with a lot of uh, 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 anti uh, corticosteroids three weeks, four, four weeks before the, the, the Olympics. That's not a program. Uh, what, I, what we do in our practice is that uh, we don't come up, uh, when things come up in that regular monitoring, it's not like, oh, now he's bad, now he needs to do uh, eight weeks of stall rest. No, quite often it just train your, do your training a bit, bit, bit different. I have been the, 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 the vet from the Olympic team in the Netherlands too. What we would do there is we would look at them and then a rider would tell me like, well, I have a problem in my half pass. And we would figure out that that horse had overstrained the fatlock a little bit. We would come up with, a, and you cannot take them for eight weeks out of the training because they're preparing for the Olympics in three months. So what you then, what you then do is you see, well, the tissue that's really at, at the risk is a couple of ligaments in the, in the fatlock. We make a program that we do less, less exercises that, that load that, but your main program can stay up. And those horses went to the Olympics. And that's how you do that. Question about fecal um, sand. Is a fecal? Yeah, well, you can find that, and then you know that, you're, that that could really affect how the horses, uh, the guts work. Uh, and no sand clear, anything? Some, yeah. Uh, but if that happens a lot, you try to com not, not just treat it, but avoid it. Put them Pasture. somewhere where there is, yeah. yeah. Pasture. Yeah. Physical exercise, training. Really important for older horses to keep them in training. And the proper training. What do you do and what do you don't do? Important is not too much fluctuation in intensity. Uh, if you one day do nothing, then you go from uh, half coast Michigan to the other coast in a six hour trail ride. And then three days nothing and then you do a racetrack, that's not helpful. That's not helpful for us either, if we would get older, or younger than even, but when you roll it, it's no. And so you want to do not too much fluctuation intensity. That doesn't mean you have to do every day the same, but you don't want to do an enormous amount of work and then nothing. We all sometimes do that a little bit, because you go on vacation, or there's a holiday. We work the horse extra those two or three days before, because he's going to get three days off. That's already not helpful. Yeah? But Important to know attention to physical limitations. That's why it's nice when you have had that examination and you know where your horse has some limitations. For instance, I see the horse and we have one flexion test of the hock being more painful. And when we look what's going on, that hock has a bit more arthritis. Well, if we know that, uh, we can tell them the limitation for this horse is flexion of the hock. And this hock, and those exercises are too much. And those exercises do a good job in keeping the, ho the hawk in the normal range of motion without overdoing it. So then you just adapt your training because you know where the weak spot on your horse is. That's helpful. Uh, and then quite often the horse can get 20 years longer with that joint because you don't overdo it with that joint because you know now which joint is the problem. That's different than injecting that joint and go on the way you did before because that's just not, not the right way. Uh, daily, if possible, work. Uh, they need to at least move. The worst thing that you can do is lock them in the stall and leave them, leave them there. Uh, that, that, everybody, there's so much research out now. In two or three days, you see already the quality of the cartilage goes down. Uh, and that's reversible as soon as you start working, but if you do it often and often, it's not. Uh, the, the quality of the synovia is changing when they do nothing. Uh, so daily, do something. Uh, and that means if it's really bad weather and they cannot be out because the field is really slippery, walk them maybe 10 minutes in the arena in hand. If that's the only thing you can do, that's much better than leaving them in the door. Uh, and now, question. Now you have a five-year-old and a 15-year-old, and you only have time for one of the two to walk 10 minutes. Which one are you going to walk? 15. Who says the five-year-old, the young one? Good. Everybody got that. Perfect. <laughs> Good. Uh, turnout than possible. It's another thing, uh, especially the upper level horses, you quite often see that they never go out anymore because everybody is afraid that they will hurt themselves. And that might happen. But if they never go out, they're really going to be really limited in a lot of things. They need to be capable to play and run and do things. Uh, and how that can work is if you think about uh, Carl Hester, a trainer in England, uh, he has a bunch of horses in his barn training. On, uh, one of those was Vallegro, won the Olympics twice, amazing horse. They go once a week out 
do a, a hack uh, and ride out in, uh, in, in the field. No training. They go every day, if it's possible, they go out. Even if that's the amazing horse that won the Olympic and he will kick the wall and he'll hit himself, uh, they, they take that risk. It's important. Uh, when we see horses that never get out, they're, they're physically already, uh, uh, psychologically already not normal and more likely to get damaged. Because if you play in the field and you make a stupid, stupid jump and it hurts, uh, in general, that horse learns from that. Now, you never get to do that, and you once go around the, the, the big course, you make a, make a big jump, and you make it wrong, much more likely you get really hurt from that. Uh, it, it builds your horse to be out. Uh, and again, I mentioned evidence-based medic medicine. Your, your physical exercise is based on what we know is real, real proven to work. Now, muscles, and I mentioned it again, uh, muscles are more or less your whole important part. The muscle mass on your older horse goes down, and you've seen muscle balance, one muscle on the one part of the joint, one mother, they, they more or less make your joint. So one of the, the lessons from today, if you can take one of them, that's your muscle is your most important part of improving your horse quality, quality of life over time. Uh, they need work to stay in shape. Uh, they don't do that by themselves. Uh, you need a minimum workload to at least not lose muscle mass, and to get better, you need more. Uh, for maintenance, so not, not running back, you need two or three times a week uh, a maintenance program. Uh, and that's not like walking around in the barn, that's really some riding, some exercises. And I'll show you some of those exercises in a bit. We have them on video, so you really can see how it should work. Uh, there's also a variety of work. If you always do the same, uh, then you're going to overload certain muscle groups, and other muscle groups are maybe not stimulated enough. So you do different things. Uh, for instance, like our horses, we have a nice area where we live. We can walk on the road. We can walk in the woods. Uh, we have some tracks on our property. Uh, so even the fancy dressage horses, the Grand Prix horses, at least three, four, five times a week, and if I could do every day, before or after a normal training exercise, they go out, they go walk in the woods, they go walk on the, on the road. The other day that we not really want to ride because it's really bad weather, uh, well, then at least took a nice coat on, 10 minutes on the road, do some work. Uh, you, you can do a variety of work, not always doing the same. <laughs> But not very distinct highs and lows in intensity. The older they get, the more you want to get that a bit smooth. Not a lot of work and then nothing. Uh, what you also want to have is a balance between muscles, tendons, and ligaments. When your tendons get stiffer, it takes a bit longer before you can move them properly. When your muscles get older and stiffer, it takes a little bit more time before you move them properly. So when you start riding, you might have a little bit longer warm up. And you might also do a couple of the more fancy exercises a bit later than what you do them in the, pa in the past. Uh, when you're having a, an eight-year-old horse, you can more or less after five minutes do everything. When they get older, you might have a bit more collected work, things like that, before you do more. Think about the most important one, extend the trot. Uh, out of nothing, an extended trot, and a really good, you can imagine, it's an enormous extension of a lot of, of tendons and ligaments. Uh, so if you want to do that, you do it a little bit. You do it like a half short side. You do it half a circle. You don't do it 15 times the whole diagonal in the outdoor, in deep sand. Uh, simple things make that you have a balance between muscle tendons and ligaments. And the older they get, it takes a little bit longer to get them going. Uh, we mentioned that already, but aging, aging, the range of motion will decrease of your joint. But when you every day, or three times a week at least, go through the full range, range of motion, that decrease goes much slower then you never move that joint to a proper way. So when we start working our horses, and again, I show you the exercises in a bit, uh, then it's helpful to make them flex better and not just do small, small. And you, you can imagine people with, especially with a really older horse, they think, wow, you're not doing too much because it will over, overdo him. If you out of nothing suddenly start doing that, yeah, true. But if you're from younger on to older, always keep that horse through the full range of motion, then he still has nearly the full range of motion. My, my, my 25 year old uh, gray horse, he could play like a foal. He would just go down, roll, roll, fly up, do all <laughs> kinds of things, and nothing stiffer than when he was when he was three. But it was because I kept on riding in there every day, more or less, and kept doing Grand Prix exercises when he was 25 to get the full range of motion. And not every day, but he needed to go through. Uh, cartilage is not such a problem, for sure, it will wear and tear, but we barely see joints where the cartilage completely is gone unless they had a traumatic in, uh, accident at young age, really damaged the, the stifle or damaged their uh, 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 meniscus, and now bone is on bone. They are difficult to handle. But their mismanagement already from the beginning, if that comes that far, you should know that the horse has a major injury at the younger age, 
and hope to deal with it to minimize the damage. Now, I sometimes see horses that come and I'm vet number five that sees them and they're already lame for two, two years uh, and they got lame after a show and then you see a stifle that's this big and, you, and I cannot fix that anymore. Uh, you ca I cannot get that horse back to normal anymore. At day one, we maybe had an option for day 20. Mm -hmm. uh, with good exercise, you can delay that range of motion decrease nearly completely. And that keeps your horse really happy for a long time. Uh, but I mentioned bulls, uh, what happens quite often is that muscles on both sides get stiffer. And so initially I could flex my elbow 60 degrees. Now this muscle gets a bit shorter, this muscle, so now I cannot do 45 degrees. Uh, so what I want to do is do exercises where I have more or less stretch, not too loaded, but a bit loaded stretch. So I tell this muscle, hey, you need to stretch, because what you quite often see, if this muscle, muscle cells have the tendency to make this muscle smaller, but I stretch them gently to the maximum way, and I keep them there for a little bit, they relax again. But I have to do that, and I have to do it often, if I do it once a week. Uh, that's why we need to do with our horses a bit. I'll tell you, tell you how we're gonna do that. Uh, stretching is a good way to prevent or fix shortening of the muscle. And it's not really that the muscle gets shorter, but your muscle cells are gonna be, make not the full motion, uh, and over long, your muscle really gets shorter. Uh, and when it's finally really a lot shorter, then it's much more tough to make it longer again. Now, muscle stretching in humans, quite often you do those exercises standing and you stretch. Good luck with that at the horse. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you're doing that, you also know that when you go through it, it's painful. It's maybe not like major pain, but it's yeah. not pleasant. Yeah. I do them daily, Kim does them daily, and you should sometimes hear, her, hear us, and I know that she's doing them, and, I, and she hears <laughs> that for me. <laughs> but we know why we do it, because we want to keep riding. Uh, but you would tell that to do that to a horse, he's not going to do that. Uh, and when you think that by doing that by hand and make him flex his neck or pack a leg up, you're going to never win that. That horse will always avoid that stretching. So we need to do it in a different way. Uh, we need to do that in motion. We do a lot of those exercises just when we ride. And the funny thing is, what I'm going to show you now is for a lot of people to say, oh, that's the dressage. Uh, because they've seen that from a dressage test. Uh, a circle, a shoulder in, things like that. They're exercises to make your horse stronger. And what they normally would do in dressage is make them like, in the, like, like a part of the test and the idea is that the, ju the judge can tell you, like, well, your horse is quite good. He can still stretch that, can still do that. But that's not the goal, that you get a good, good result from your judge. Your goal is that you make your horse stronger and better, and we increase or maintain the quality of the gates by doing those exercises. So funny is that a lot of those exercises really do that. We think of them, oh, it's stupid. Next week I have a show. Oh, yeah, and I have to do five, 15, sh 15 shoulder ins. But you should do them on a daily basis because it's a gymnastic, uh, gym gymnastic exercise to keep your horse in a good shape. Let's start with the training schedule for an older horse. Let me do step by step. We start with a warm up from 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, younger horses can do shorter because they're really in a good shape. When they're older, because their muscles get a little stiffer, the tendons get a bit lift, uh, I would warm up 10, 15 minutes. Let's uh, just walk, trot a bit canter. Nothing special. No crazy uh, acceleration, deceleration, no crazy short turns, just normal warm up. Uh, what's important, symmetrical. Even if one side is easier than the other, don't overdo the difficult side or don't do the, the easy side. Always more or less count. Uh, count five times to the left, five times to the right. Uh, three circles to the left, three circles. It needs to be symmetrical. The more symmetrical we ride, the more symmetrical you make your horse. Uh, when we start to do, uh, and it's funny, uh, I have a little device, and uh, one of my lectures in the future might go over that. Uh, it, I can put it on the saddle and it makes it, 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 it analyzes the motion of the horse, a walk, trotting, canter, it gives you a lot of graphs what the horse is doing, but also tells you how much left and right you go. And I always think that I'm doing very symmetrical. Then I hang that thing on it, I'm not. I'm quite often at 10% off. And so you really have to be really aware of the fact that you do the same exercise in the same amount in the same direction. Uh, what you want to do is a bit little gen 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 gentle changes of the frame, a bit longer, a bit more up. Uh, Warm up 10 minutes with the horse with, with the horse with the nose on the ground and it's running on the forehand, it's not going to be helpful. Uh, but one circle, big stretch, and then bring him back up, and then flex him a bit more to the left, and then flex him a bit more to the right, and then let him stretch. That's helpful. That are like stretches, like you saw the pictures, the, the people do in the picture, but we do it in gate. And because we do it in gate, 
we don't have to use our force to tell the horse to do it. His own movement is going to do it. Yeah? That's very helpful. And it's really what I would, would, would call more massaging the horse in its own body. And those are, and again, I have videos in a minute, we're going to see that. When it's really cold, that's going to take longer. And like the last week was not so cold, but two or three weeks before, you can have, you have this yourself already. I have it for sure. I'm moving slower when it's minus 20. And horse, the same thing, so take more time. Uh, then we get our regular work, 30 to 45 minutes, and now we're going to do all the exercises the horse knows, at least. Meaning, if it's a first level horse, it will not be too much. But for instance, it's a Prison George or Grand Prix horse, to keep doing the exercises, even if he's not going to show anymore. Yeah, when Luciano was 22, I didn't show anymore, but I still did the exercises. Not every day. I had one day that I did some size PF, another day we did some temperature changes, another day we do some pirouettes. But he can do them. It's not a big effort for him to do them, so if I keep doing them, I'm keeping him in good shape. If I would think he's too old for that, within half a year he's stiff and cannot do them anymore. So you maintain that. Uh, like, not every day all the exercises, but a little bit of mixture, uh, and you give over the time more little breaks in between. Uh, I do two or three pirouettes, I walk a bit. I do something else, I do walk a bit. Uh, because the stamina goes down, and what's the problem when you cannot keep your muscles strong anymore, when your muscles get tired? Are you good in protecting your joints from overflexing? No. That's why with the, young, with the older horse we need, any horse we more or less need, but in the older horse we might need a little bit more, a little bit walk, do something, and it doesn't have to be half an hour, it's sometimes half the arena. Long, long rain, long walk, uh, the muscles can stretch, the blood flow can come, 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 uh, get going, and you do your next, next level of exercise, and you give them a little break. You do, uh, also, when a horse is doing the exercise nice, and he can walk, it's reward. Uh, what I see too often is they go on and on and on. And that's especially what I see with that uh, school horse. He can do passage in Piaf, so the people want to feel it. So every day you do 10 minutes passage in Piaf. That horse is ruined in, in half a year. Uh, because he's only doing what he should not every day do. And there's never that little walk in between. Uh, if a horse is interested in new things, you can even in an older horse do new things. There's nothing against, even if your horse is 20, and he never did uh, half steps, but he's eager to, to want to do them, and you don't over ask him, he can try to do that. If yours never did a kind of pirouette, he can start with a little bit of working pirouette. There's no problem. Don't do it from one day to another, certainly all, every time, but uh, they are still capable of improving on things, even if they get older. Well, take more time, but you can. Uh, always after some more collected work, some stretching. You can imagine, if you get a little bit more together, you make your muscles more shorter, you for sure want to make your muscles longer after that. And uh, not only at the end, long, long rain and walk, no, in between. Uh, if I do, on any horse, if I'm riding, and I do a couple of uh, half steps of passage in Piaf, directly after that we do maybe a bit medium trot, or just walk on a long rain, and then I do another exercise. Uh, you you want to get in and out of that shorter and longer. The most strenuous exercises, most difficult exercises, don't do them more to the end of your, uh, of your schedule. That horse is already getting a little bit tired, and it's more likely to get injured because his muscles get fatigued. You better do them in the first half of your, of your, uh, of your training time. Uh, and again, acceleration, a medium trot, extended trot, uh, canter, uh, in smaller amounts, and it's very nice to do it on a circle, because if you do it on a circle, uh, stretch uh, and then extend the tread, uh, trot on the, for the test, yeah, you want to do that. When you do it on the circle, when you do a little bit of extended tr trot, five strides on the circle, what happens with the outside of the body? You stretch it more. So when you think about stretching your core muscles, you stretch your core muscles much more than when you do the small trot. So doing some strides of extended or medium trot on the circle is very good to keep a flexible spine. Now all those things we don't really think about, but it's, it's, so, it's so simple. Uh, what we, did, we, we do with that, we maintain a good flexible joint in the legs and backs. Uh, and by doing this, you stimulate your tendons and ligaments to, to the max to not get stiffer. When you do this three times, four times a week, a couple of the exercises, and I'll show you them, uh, any horse stays better. Uh, it's more or less like the standard package of exercise you should do. What we do in the walk is stretching as far down as possible, head down, but not like long, uh, for a little bit. Uh, and then making spiraling circles as small as possible. So you start a big circle, and you start spiraling in until he tells you, I cannot do this. And initially, you will see that it's even maybe difficult to do a 10-meter circle, but when you do it every day, finally you can do a 6- or 7-meter circle. 
When you keep doing that, uh, not 700 times, but one time in and out, one time in and out the other direction, you make the whole spine in lateral flexibility loose. And in walk, you cannot really overdo it. Uh, a lot of serpentines and frulings. What is a fruling? Fruling is like you make a half a serpentine, then a little circle, little circle, so little eight. Half your serpentines, little circle. And so changing from left to right and changing from large circle to small circle. All in walk. Nearly not any horse you can damage them in this. Uh, we are not strong enough to make them that not do that properly in walk. Unless you lose the quality of the walk. Uh, and you normally have a one, two, three, four beat walk. Uh, and you suddenly that look, you know, you do too much. Uh, but as soon as he has a normal walk, good. Leg yield in half pass, perfect things. And what sometimes could be helpful uh, is when you stand and you stand, you say, hey, now flex with your neck here and flex with your neck there. But you cannot do that when there's a neck issue because then you might overdo it. So again, it's nice when you start all those exercises and you know where the weak spots of your horse are. Because otherwise you might damage things that are there and you didn't know. Head trot, you're spiraling in and out. If your shoulder in and haunch is in, if the horse knows what a half pass is, you do a half pass. Extended trot from collection, but not too long and not too powerful, like what I said quite often, it's really nice to do it on a circle. Uh, and stretching and more collecting. So you stretch a bit, you bring it back up. I'll show you that on the video in trot. You don't even have to do rising trot for that. Especially the, the older horse, you don't need to unload his back for the stretch. He can. So you do sit collect the trot, and you stretch a bit, and come back up. And so that's a much more functional exercise than let him fall completely on the forehand with a long, le long neck and rising trot. Uh, and when you feel that the horse is getting tired, get a bit slower, do a little bit walk. It's a bit dark because it's in the arena when we are playing with the light. It's also not as bright here because the, the projector is not too bright, but you can still see it's part of that. And what we see here is a trot. And we're spiraling, make that circle smaller. You see, it gets smaller and smaller, and the smaller the circle is, the more flexion there is in the entire spine. You know, once or twice, big circle in, big circle out, circle in, circle out, to the other side, and that for that day is already enough. Uh, and if you start with that at age eight or age six, they don't know any better. So you really keep them very flexible for the long run. Yeah, we'll go to the next one. There you go. Uh, sitting trot, and we're gonna do now shoulder in, and not the whole long side, and then a bit haunches in. A nice flexibility exercise. In shoulder in, there's like 30 degree flexion. In haunches in, there's like 40 degree flexion. Uh, and by changing that, the horse also learns how to use your leg as a pivoting thing. Maybe you can do that one time again. Yeah. Uh, shoulder in first. And then from the shoulder in to the haunches in. Great exercise. Once or twice, both directions, done. Very simple. Next one. And the horse of this video is 18 years old. It's also doing it great. A trot on the circle. And then you go a couple of strides more collected. And then a couple of strides more forward. A couple of strides more collected. A couple of strides more forward. And not a whole diagonal and full extended trot. No, just a little bit of this. Play with the frame. Play with the... the Little transitions within the gate, a bit more back, a bit more forward. I think that's the same, maybe. Yeah. Same thing. Nice round canter. It doesn't have to be like amazing that you win, win the Grand Prix. It's a nice round canter. Nice collected, not really collected, but nice together canter. In a nice round frame. And then the game is we're going to stretch his neck a bit. We did that in trot too. We don't have that on video properly. And we might, next video, might do that in canter. 
going to be visible. Okay. And so now we're going to change the frame a bit in the canter, or maybe this is the, yeah, this is the shoulder, the, the spiraling in in canter, and work a bit like we were working pirouette. And see, it's all simple. It's, it's decently stress free and nice, easy exercise. And the first day that you're going to do that is not going to work like that. But if you from young, young on take the horse to doing that, it's just simple. Here you see a little bit of the stretching, making a little bit longer, and not the nose down on the floor, but clearly a bit longer frame, and then picking them back up again. Or let it go to me completely, <laughs> and then it should not fall in his face. <laughs> That's what you do, you play with, see how far you can go. Oh, yeah. Smart, now you just do it again. Yeah. <laughs> really collected, coming in. <coughs> and then a couple of strides really forward. And again, not like 16, 16 jumps, 20 jumps, the whole diagonal. No, just a little bit, a little bit more, a bit back. And the more they get that, you can go a bit bigger and a bit smaller. You can imagine, if your horse can easily do that, your joints are much more used to the maximum range of motion when you do an extended canter than when you do a minimum canter, but not the whole diagonal. Two or three jumps and then back. That's much safer, much healthier for the horse, for sure. Uh, collection versus slow. Uh, especially in old horses, I see quite often people are careful to push them too much. Mm -hmm. So everything becomes slow. Well, think about this. Uh, when you're quick and you have your leg, the, the leg goes on the ground and goes up, you have a very short impact down. Maybe the force on, the, on, the, on uh, the, the, the upward force is a bit bigger, but the horse is made for that. He will not break his leg in a normal arena doing that. Now you have a slow horse on the floor, goes up. As long as we go straight, no problem. But now we go on a circle or we do like a lateral gait. So what's going to happen? We make change of direction. When your horse is quick, the horse is boop, off the ground and turns. Now you have the horse is slow, it's on the ground. <laughs> is rotating the whole lower leg, what's it not made for? So when we think about like uh, things like collateral ligament problems in the lower leg, uh, uh, ring bone quite often caused by going too slow. Uh, on, the, on the upper level horses, not, uh, not enough impulsion in the can to pirouette, uh, sit, get up, turn. Now sit, same thing. So the older horse needs to have quickness in there. And that's why we show that little bit forward. Don't go slow. Slow wrecks them. Also, when you think about muscle, muscle fibers, you have slow, fi slow, fi slow twitch muscle fibers. They can do this for hours. You have fast twitch. They quickly, quickly get tired. Which one do you need to correct yourself when you nearly fall on your face? The slow twitch or the fast twitch? Fast. The fast twitch. Yeah. So you need to train them. If you never train them, that horse falls on his face when he falls because he has no, no, no trained muscles. So even in the old, or especially in the older horse, fast is, is good. Slow, always slow, because you don't want to overdo it, wrecks them. Uh, then you do cool down, 10, 15 minutes is a good stretch. Uh, work on a, walk on a longer range, or really long range, so they can do whatever they do, and go outside. And you have the option, it's so great to just do your cool down on the road, on the property, little walk around. For the horse, nice. Uh, what's really important that stretchy with an active hind end is a lot of the muscles when they get a little bit shorter uh, But what happens when you work a muscle properly you get a little bit of lactic acid in that muscle that makes that muscle a bit shorter When the muscle gets shorter uh, the blood vessels on the outside of the muscle are farther away from the inside So there's not so good diffusion of your lactic acid So your center of your muscle still has some lactic acid you put him in the barn the next morning he's stiff That's why now you walk him in a long rein on stretchy muscles, the muscle gets smaller uh, in diameter, the vessels are closer to the, to the core of the muscle, and you lose your 
uh, lactic acid uh, can clearly go to the, to the, to the, blood, the blood vessel. So uh, the, the cool down is really important. And you can cool down in trot. Uh, if I did a lot of work on my horse in, in canter work and things like that, I might even trot sometimes figure eights on a longer rein in trot because then you stretch different muscles in a different way and then I do my walk. It's not like mandatory only walking. It depends on the condition of your horse. Uh, I talked about the stress reduction, uh, important. Stress by itself is not bad. Chronic stress is bad. Uh, I talk about uh, the curve of excitement. Uh, if you have your job, it's always the same. You never learn anything new in your life. How, how long are you gonna do that? No. Uh, then you maybe go skydiving or so to get some, some curve of excitement. <laughs> Horses need to do that too. There needs to be sometimes a moment that they, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, sometimes you, when you watch our Facebook page, you can see a video, and Kim is walking in the arena with a drum, uh, and I'm on my horse, and then she's like, boom, 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 wow, my horse is going all over the place. Uh, but that little curve of excitement, and I know that I can handle it, and that he doesn't fly into the wall or breaks his leg, but he's a little bit, whoa, what is that? Uh, that's an important thing. And he, when that, after that goes well, he thinks, whoa, that was fun. Uh, so that <laughs> keeps him more interesting. Also, the little adrenaline rush, gives a better import. Uh, if I would never do anything like that and never do the normal warm up and, and work out with my horse, you cannot do that. But on top of the normal program, give them a little little nugget of, of excitement. And that diff differs per horse what you do. And some of them you just boo and it's all enough. And otherwise you have to just really come, in, come inside with the, can with the cannon. Uh, but you want to do something to get them, get them excited. And I could see that really with my gray horse, uh, until 22 I did dressage, he liked that. Then we went police work. He was like a different horse even. He was so happy with it. If I came in a uniform, he was just done dancing and stuff like, yeah. <laughs> and when Kim would ride him in the indoor and the police car came by outside with a siren, he would just say to her, forget it. I'm uh, now okay. Look at this, I have to do work. And even, even that kind of excitement, he really liked that. And so, and we are often quite often, often afraid of the two. That little jump, oh, you don't want that. So you make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, if you're used to that, you have a big jump for the horse better, for us better. Uh, another thing, retirement. Uh, I mentioned that a lot of horses. If you just suddenly really put them in the field and say, "Oh, now it's so nice for you to retire," for a lot of horses, that's not a solution. It's stress. It's chronic stress. It's stress because they're not doing the normal thing they used to. They don't do the exercises. In general, when I see people do that, it's a it's a it's a life sentence, but not a nice one. Uh, and some horses do it like it, but I think most horses like to have at least some work. And they may be less than before, but don't put them in the field and I'll never look at them. That's it's not nice. And so what's taking care of an aging horse? Maybe it's different what you were expecting when you came here about all kind of medications or what you need to do and things like that. It's not. It's more like how you ride them. But it's teamwork. Huh? You need the rider, the trainer, the owner, the farrier, all those people's, all those people in line with your help. Uh, sometimes when the horse gets older, your saddle might not fit anymore because his back's changing, uh, because muscle mass, so you, you need to adapt that. Uh, so let's go on that. Uh, important, don't start too late. 12 year, and I would even say eight year. Uh, because, and you could see that the couple of the videos that you saw, the 18 year old old, old horse is Roy. Roy has been started as a young horse very properly. So he developed a lot of muscle and a lot of nice gaits. And then when you maintain that, it's still there. When it's from 6 to 8 or 12, he would not have really done work properly, then he doesn't have the muscle that you can build on later. And so part of your foundation is already laid in an early stage. And then when I talk about 12, that's maybe even late. Uh, doing those exercises, doing the stretchy things like that, the nice building of muscles, the earlier the better. Uh, and, and 6, 7 is a perfect age that they can start doing lateral work and things like that, no problem. Don't wait to ask for help, ask for help for your vet, ask for help for your trainer, uh, ask for help for a specialist if you have a problem. Uh, and if you need a specialist, or s go for a specialized veterinarian or specialist, because in general, you can imagine what we're telling about here, that's beyond what the normal vet is taught. So if you ask your normal vet, it's like, wow, would they be good for my older? They don't know. They didn't get that in their education. I got that in my specialty training as a, uh, a spare sports medicine and rehab trainer. It was four years after going to vet school completed from vet school, and vet school in the Netherlands for seven years. And so there's a lot more education. If they ask me if I can put my arm in a mare and say there's a fall in there, I can't. That's beyond what I've done for 20, 30 years, I've not done it anymore. But when you talk about those things, I know them. And so it's no wonder that your local veterinarian might not help you too much with this, or say, oh, it's arthritis, let it inject the joint. That's just a different approach. 
Performance evaluations, we mentioned that. Uh, we did that for years already at Centennial, once every half year, more or less like a pre-purchase exam or sports medicine exam. Really go through, hold that horse, give a report with how he's doing. We run some blood work. Uh, very good way of having the horse from young to older going in a proper way. And when they get older, be ahead of problems and recognize them as they are and then help them. Uh, then we also have another option that's just new, what we start with here. That's what we call the sports medicine and training evaluation. So that's similar like this, but it's not in blood work. But here we go and have the rider ride with me as an instructor. And I'm going to go through a couple of the things and tell you like this is how you do it. For your horse, we just figured out during the exam that this is a weak spot. This is how you fix that by riding. And this is what you should not do. So it's the very individual program. What's just difficult for your vet and your trainer to do together because both of them maybe not even talk on the same wavelength. But for sure, you need, you need to have a specialized training to be able to do that. Uh, and then for the real addicts, we have a combined evaluation that we do that and do all the blood work. Uh, and again, if you look at the, uh, sure, it's a lot of money, but think about how you're spending on uh, weight machines, ladies coming with snakes on your horse, uh, uh, supplements. This is a much better way of spending it. Conclusion. Again, maybe different than what you were expecting, but muscular condi condition is nearly the main factor, for, main factor for good age, for good aging. That's what they tell you people too. Keep moving. Keep. They don't tell you maybe all the things behind it, but it's the same. Uh, for horses, for sure. Start at age 12 and keep them working. Uh, and you can, what the little exercises you saw saw on the, on video, they are for most horses working. But there's a problem, maybe not. If the horse has an idiosacral problem, you need to fix that first because he might not maybe able to make a good circle to one direction. But when you have it going, it's very simple with three times a week doing those, those training exercises and your horse stays sound and good. You might not improve him, but you really delay uh, deterioration. Uh, and again, uh, your horse is fit, your horse is in general happy. They know what, uh, you saw the horses on the video, they, they like that job. Maybe the moment you ask him to come a bit more collective, do I have to do it? And then there is a moment from, oh, I can do this. And so it's, it's not unpleasant for the horse. In general, when you do this, what you will see is that after some more work, they get an endorphin release. So they stand back in the stall, oh, that was great. So the next day, they even like it better to do that exercise. And you keep them sound. You don't need machines, you don't need supplements, you don't need all kinds of medications. Luciano, 20 years old, 25 years old, not any medication. If there's a problem, he gets it, but he had no painkillers, no, uh, the only thing he got percent after like age 20 because he got Cushing's. Well, then that was useful. Uh, Wally, 21, no medication. Roy, uh, 18, no medication. Never. But there's a problem, yeah, a week or something like that, nothing. Uh, and they get there and they do, do good, so you can get there. And the whole industry wants you to believe, to believe you that you're a bad parent, but you didn't give your horse those machines and all the medication. No, you should give your horse the work. That's important. <coughs> and what we see is the, the turn the way around. They ride terribly. The horse is on the forehand. They bounce on the horse. The back is stiff as a board because they cannot sit with a with an improper fit saddle. And then to deal with that, they need to throw them full in medication. That's not the proper way. Uh, proof is in the pudding. 21, <laughs> 25. Uh, and in a couple of years, we have maybe a couple more of the old ones to show you that it, it's doable. It really is doable. And they quite often ask me when they see those horses like, what do you give them? Nothing. Good work. Two coming lectures that will come in half a year to a year or something like that. We're going to take care of the younger horse. Like, how do we build up all that so that you can do that? So it's a nice addition to this. And I'm working at this moment, but I mentioned to you like a little little tool that you can hook up to your horse on the saddle within a minute and then you get data after you ride you get data back and what you see here is two graphs what you see here is uh, the dark green is the force during trot on the right diagonal and the other one is the force during the left diagonal what we want to do is that it needs to be symmetrical well it will be the ideal world but this is the horse before some training and this is the same horse after some more training, you see now they're much more on top of each other. And so you can measure the effect of your training with newer tools. You can feel it too, but it's nice when you can really see where the changes are coming. And we'll give a lecture on in like half a year or something like that when I'm more working with that unit to know exactly what it can do. And I can show you what you can do with it and you can buy it yourself and you can work with that. So you can, can measure what you're doing and if it's effective or not. 
Yes, so keep an eye on that. If she was interested in this lecture and you think that it's good, we'll uh, advertise that again. Thanks all for sitting here and don't fall asleep. <laughs>